International Women's Day is celebrated every year. It is an occasion to celebrate the progress made towards achieving gender equality and women's empowerment, but also to critically reflect on those accomplishments. The campaign theme for International Women's Day 2022 is Break the Bias. Whether deliberate or unconscious, the bias makes it difficult for women to move ahead. Knowing that bias exists isn't enough. Action is needed to level the playing field. I was surprised to learn that in the 20th century, these things still happen. Today, we're chatting with someone who experienced bias from the day she was born. Isha Nagar faced rejection from her own flesh and blood because she was born a girl. Fighting the odds, she has risen to become the MD of a corporate and is always looking at the brighter side of life. Hey, Isha, so nice to have you. Our conversations offline uh, have come online and, and I don't want to spill all the beans out, but uh, what was childhood like in Sarampur, especially being a girl child? First of all, thank you that, you know, like we are doing this. I was first of all very nervous because when it comes to talking about life is so different than doing your normal panels, right? And I'm used to doing very technical, industry-led, heavy-duty pieces all the while. And thank you for encouraging me to, uh, you know, like talk and come forth and like talk about all of this. Um, to your question, uh, Saharanpur, I think when I just, you know, think about growing up, to me is um, very special, of course because I was born there and if I think about my early years I just feel like there's a sense of comfort but then there is also a sense of uh, right from the get-go hustle like somehow that city just reminds me of like a lot of hustle that started for me I feel like when I was born Hmm. And, and that is what Saharanpur really like denotes for me uh it's also special because of the people I was there for like I think till about like 14, 15 years of my life. Yeah. For so the early years, it, it's all about, you know, whatever you have like gathered from different people that you've met. And I particularly like it because some very special things happen to me. Like I have forever grown up, you know, when I was telling you that I've grown up in my maternal side of the family. And I, I saw some very drastic things for me in the city. Uh, growing up with your grandparents, your mother's grandparents, not living with your parents. Uh, and just seeing how a very different childhood could be because that was very different from what my peer group or my schoolmates were really doing at that time and there was a silent undertone of uh, you know me being a girl child and uh, you know the differences between my paternal side of the family and maternal side of the family so it just brings in like a lot of emotion that city to me as 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 we speak uh, which 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 just tells me, as I said, hustle and something different uh, that moved me in my early years. Right. Um, tell me, when you were young, did yeah. you ever, you know, you mentioned that you were growing up with your um, mom's side of yes. the family. Was there ever a bitch that said, why am I being treated differently? Why is my peer group growing up with their parents and why am yeah. I not growing with their parents? Yes, I think there were a lot of questions. Uh, it was very easy till I was like, I think about four years old. It just completely changed when I had my brother. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, as siblings, we always used to question that why is my brother living in my parents' house and I am living in a very special setup. So a lot of questions used to come, but I think when you are um, when you're young, you don't really think too much about it. It's only when you go to school and when you see a very different social setup around your friends, then that's when you start questioning things. Otherwise, for me, it was very easy. My nana nani were my mom dad, and my mom used to like visit me every day. She she used to work. Uh, she was like forever like a working mom, and she always used to like visit me after her school hours. And uh, my dad used to make it a point that, you know, he is uh, always like checking in on me and he's coming for my PTMs, uh, etc. and doing those duties. So it used to definitely ring that bell in my head, but it was only as I was growing up in my perhaps like a fifth standard, sixth standard kind of a thing when I, I understood why it was different. I understood what, uh, you know, what led to all of this and what thinking my paternal side of the family had. And, and all that just was like unraveling like slowly for me. Right. So tell me, what was that? What was the real reason? Why were you kept away? And and how has that impacted? Because this is not, uh, and, and to me, this is not Isha's story alone. This could be a story yes. of 
so many of our generation yeah. women in our generation so many of them in generations to come right yeah. uh, where and and you know we've seen some incredible work in and and a lot a lot of it is being spoken about today is about the trauma that a child goes through or the exactly. conditioning that a child goes through it becomes such a it becomes such a strong muscle memory that does everything that we yeah. do kind of comes from that muscle memory right so yes. what was that story and and how has it shaped you as a person you are today um i think that um the real reason uh, i mean it was just a simple reason where you know uh, my 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 dad's mom for example she she felt that okay the reason is she's a girl but we mm-hmm. can't raise her and and the moment she said that when i was born uh, my granddad immediately was like okay you know we will raise her Yeah. and uh, i mean this is of course what is told to me i have i don't have any memory of all of this uh, but then as as i was growing up i never challenged too much that uh, you know why is this happening to me because as much as there was a rejection on one side there was a lot of positivity on the other side yeah. uh, i had a very very good support system at my nanu's place uh, where uh, you know i was being raised with a very uh, i would say very comfortable living and very good values the only thing that was just being told to me is that you're special so i was always told that you're special i never used to understand what is a special thing attached to me so it was like you are special you you have to do like you know made to do like good things and i had my uh, masi and mamu and all you know like who were like the age gaps were very less so they were almost like my brother and sisters so in a way i had a pseudo family i had a mom that i had like a brother sister set up who were like giving me that power to like move ahead and you know like at school at academics uh that was like ingrained in me that you know you have to be just but good because you are special and somewhere i used to also feel that energy around me like when now i process i feel that there was a very different energy for me as a child because the only thing i was focused at was just doing good just being that perfect kid and i don't know if it if that was a result of this muscle memory that was being created because i think that somehow when it's ingrained in you that you are different or you're special you try to for, for a sense of self validation perhaps you try to do everything act because i somewhere knew that there is this one gap in my life i was trying to hustle through and like do everything perfect like a perfect student you know we were discussing that day like yeah. like a perfect scorer like a, a person who's like scoring good and is coming like first always in school and that is something that really shaped a lot of ethos for me in life i think yeah. uh because uh being focused and not looking at something that you don't have as a normal kid but rather looking at something that is being given by the universe yeah. uh, always made me look at the other side and that is something that i always like very hold strong when i work or in situations that at at at, at a lot of places where i'm not getting the usual or i'm being faced with a lot of hurdles you know like the project and like work at, at even in life with like my friends and family i try to look at the brighter side and i think that was a muscle memory that got created very early on right and um, and and tell me did you when you got to know yeah that you know when you are sensible enough that you got to know that this is my truth did it break you did you did it shatter you it did i i wouldn't say it did it of course it did because uh, i still remember i used to i was a, i was a typical dear diary bachcha who yes. used to write you know like this journaling came in like very early for me i used to write like every day and i remember scribbling my heart out when i used to you know ponder over what would have I always used to question why did my you know for example why didn't dad do something about it right you would question that why didn't the parents do anything about it but after a point in time when i was still seeing a lot of love in whatever manner they could whatever their reasons were i didn't like think too much about that i just used to look at okay whatever has happened i'm I still have like a lot uh it was though it was tough for my brother to understand all of this yeah that was another part of the story Because yeah, because that's interesting. How does how does he, how did he uh, experience the privilege? Privileges? <laughs> did he think he was privileged? And 
uh, did he think you were privileged? Like, like he what thinks plan- I was privileged. I think that's such a such a nice question. If he would have been hearing this, he would like laugh. He forever thinks I'm the privileged bacha because uh, I think what he thought was that he had only mom and dad, and I had like so many people. Right. And I think that when you tend to be different, you become you become an instant apple of the eye. Yeah. Uh, you know, like everyone would like try to be like very good to you, and and I could see that like my extended side of the family they were extra good to me as compared to my brother. So uh, I always like feel that uh, it was very challenging for him, and I'm sure it led to uh, his share of traumas as well for him. That yeah. you know why can't I be with my sister? And we had like a very good bond. Yeah. Um, and then we used to our our like vacations used to be like planning how many days are you going to live with me? How many days are you? Uh, am I going to like? So it was very. Uh, I I would say that it was our normal, but when I uh, think about it, it's not at all normal. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, tell me, in spite of the situation, you yeah. you had a great equation with your brother, which I find very strange. Yes. Because otherwise, there's always this venom against the person who's more privileged, right? Yes. Or who gets, and especially here, you're not talking about a pay package or a. You know, a better gift or something. Yes, you know, you're talking about the attention yeah. love of your parents, right? Exactly. Which is so fundamental. How yeah. do you not end up disliking him or developing the sense of jealousy towards him? I I think I um, yeah, this is this is so tough. <laughs> But uh, I think I never had like jealousy for him. um uh, it never came to me like naturally like most of most of these negative feelings never used to like come to me maybe it, it was because of the surroundings and the way everyone was steering the narrative to me yeah. uh, and then uh, our bond was very good like when we were kids we of course had our differences as we were growing up and it was not so rosy we used to have like fights on everything and a very different opinion because um like i was like you know as i said like this praised kid at home who's like killing it at academics and and there is this prodigy my brother is like a super prodigy and uh, though he wasn't like me at academics he was very good at like other things but then there's always like this comparison right yeah, yeah. that happens between like siblings yeah. um and i often compare his relationship and mine to that beers and digi alia part situation that you know we were like uh, those siblings who were always like pegged against each other so it never led to jealousy but i think it definitely led to a huge amount of competitiveness uh between both of us because mm-hmm. our um, our social setup and everything that we had was very different uh and we never knew why we were yeah. never able to decode why but there were incidents that happened like later on in our life i would say in our 20s uh, for both my brother and me that really brought us so together that after that there was nothing like every everything that was like negative between us that just like flew like yeah. yeah so i think as as we grow our life became more dramatic yeah uh so to say like dramatic for the outsider uh, very uh, painful for us but then i think the as as life evolved we became very closer yeah um i i if i may ask what was that bit that conspired when you guys were in your 20s yeah. and and what really made you mother uh your brother in in many yeah. ways and how did you how did you just deal with it yeah i th- i think that um, by the time we were okay with our realities uh and and then you know like life always has a plan and yeah. and i think by i like while i was in my 20s i had you know left saharanpur for my graduation and post grad very comfortable with the realities and we all were used to it yeah and and i think that if i go back i think 2011 was a very uh, pivotal year for both of us uh and and pivotal means that life just like pivoted uh we we lost our mom um which was very uh, accidental uh, her passing is something that really just uh, you know when a beautiful picture is like going on yeah uh, as bright as this blazer and then and then suddenly it just halts and and i still remember i was in my post grad mba final semesters and and i get this call and and i was not able to believe it and i think that incident and my brother was uh, in his engineering at that time uh so he was in his college i was in my college we were called at saharanpur 
and we just couldn't believe it because she was 45 she was like one person who you know like connected both of us and irrespective of our differences and setup she was like a very strong person who was keeping it all together i think mean, you know like mothers do this right yeah. like yeah they just keep it all together they just keep this very nice narrative to the kids also about realities of life and um, i think that incident just made us question a lot of things and and the differences just like went like anything that was between us like remotely we didn't speak to each other for like a good time like for a week we were in shock uh, but then when we finally did we decided that okay you know what this life is something that we want to live together there were no dialogues there were no commitments but i think we just knew that okay you know what if there is something that is there for him and something that is there for me is him and i yeah and 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 then i think while it was it was just going all well i think in 2014 just 3 years after our dad passed away uh and that was a tragic train accident that happened and and i think that if if that was something which is our mom passing with dad leaving we were just i think we were just like i i can't express that feeling to be honest uh it's 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 not a emotion um, i i don't think so i'll ever feel that but we felt like something was off from from our heads yeah uh, though we had so many people around us but then just you know uh, facing the fact that now dad who was the only binding factor after our mom is also gone um i think that really brought our I, i always wonder how grief got us together but i always feel that grief also did a very um it had a purpose in our life for both my brother and i uh, grief gave us a lot of perspective and uh, that made us very humble and um, just like knitted to both of us and that led me to parenting him you know coming back to your question yeah uh, that was where my pseudo parenting journey began right. uh, and and i i was like 26 uh, he had just like graduated and he was figuring it out he was processing it all Uh, because for him uh, you know with me not staying with him then mom passing away then that passing away that was like a lot that life was giving to yeah. him at that age and yeah. but then i think it was uh, it has been magical parenting him has been magical i don't think now i parent him but at that age i felt like this uh, Uh, ardent responsibility yeah. maternal instincts whatever we call it that came on uh, heavy on me with so much happening did that uh does it become difficult uh when you are when you are a grown up to sort of have um you know in a lot of things that you're doing does it become uh difficult to process that emotion take different actions or think differently because because there is a conditioning uh yeah. when you're doing it does it become difficult to trust relationships does it become too difficult for to get attached when you've dealt with so much in the past yeah um i think yes uh, so many things can happen but i think it differs in terms of how your treatment to the thing is but i think the instant reaction from the body is defense mechanism and your mind also yeah. like like in my case i think i just became a challenger hmm. the, my immediate reaction was so what i'll i'll go through it Yeah. uh okay you know like you start challenging the universe okay bring it on what's next and and i think that impacts you because what's happening is you're not giving yourself time to process grief yeah you are not giving yourself time to process things but instantly the reaction for both uh, me and my brother in a way was let's move on yeah it's only when we were moving on and when our uh, actions were very different the way our mind was processing this was very different you know your uh, important milestones in your life like say your parents birthdays and you know like your birthdays it's only yeah. like when those things start coming up it hits you or yeah. say for example the first salary that you will get you'll be like oh my god who who do i like tell this so yeah. it's only when you when you move on it's life that keeps on telling you and keeps on reminding you that there is a vacuum Hmm. but then a change has happened in your mind because your mind is continuously telling that okay you know what you are like too good for this and and i think that in certain cases it could also be very different it could be very negative as well like i know that for my brother it was very hard it was very opposite a little bit more negative uh you know like you, you definitely have trust issues 
I have seen that trust issues get impacted. Like you are not able to trust in relationships or, you know, like you start thinking, how can it be so bad to me? Yeah. And and then in a way, either you could either challenge that, okay, you know, bring it on. Or you could be like, listen, I don't care. I don't care about the world. I don't care about the relationships. And I've seen, I think, both the sides uh, for both of us. Right. Yeah. Um, and tell me, uh, having gone through something, um, something like this in your, you know, just differential treatment in your childhood, how does that um, impact you when you see girls being differentiated, uh, yeah. or put on a, or get like second citizen uh, treatment, or yeah. um, does that align you, or does that, uh, you know, does that change your goalpost uh, to working towards it or or changing mm. things for them? I think that um, it has uh, not too much again like not I wouldn't say in my instantly in my 20s not so much but in the last uh, four or five years it has become a very uh, it's like it's like a part of the purpose for sure it's yeah. always in the head I think when we have been conversing we have talked about this so much yeah uh that this just comes out of you uh but something that my uh you know like my my current boss and like uh, other people mentors around me they keep on telling me that it's always like talent over whatever neutrality like live like a gender neutral life etc and and for the largest part of time like i always used to feel that okay you know i have a strong white voice so sometimes sometimes your reality is so colored you're not able to look at what other people are feeling yeah. But I think at least in the corporate world, as as I'm progressing, I'm seeing these challenges more and more. Uh, and I'm still trying to figure out that like, what is the right manner to empower this or what is the right manner to bridge this, yeah. uh, you know, this colored perspective towards women. Uh, specifically, like I see that like in uh, senior leadership so much uh, that there is definitely like a gap. And there is a way to do this, not necessarily to have a gender debate. But perhaps giving the right tools and and you know perhaps mentoring uh, women in the right direction to go beyond their self-limiting beliefs because right. I personally feel that this the, the gender there's, there, there's there's a lot of self-limiting beliefs in the head right. and and that's very different for every individual. I haven't really done categorically anything around this, but it's always in the back of my head when I'm working or I'm having like a situation in office or otherwise. Where I try to bring in a perspective of removing self-limiting beliefs first, rather than having a women empowerment agenda, because I think both are very different. Right. Like it's a journey, right? Like you can't run the empowerment agenda without uh, changing the root causes of what has made women believe uh, the way they look at themselves. Right. Um, yeah. Also, tell me um, now. I, I don't know what is your choice. Whether you yeah. want, whether you want to be a uh, uh, you want to be a parent or you know that cusp of deciding yeah. you want to be a yeah. parent or not be a parent but if isha was a parent yeah what would you definitely not do what, what i definitely would not do yeah that's a tough question <laughs> what i would not do is i think i something that i learned which worked for me was like my my the, the way i was raised it was not put in a box Mm -hmm. I think something that I don't want to do is also put a stereotypical parenting in the box. I right. don't want to go by rules. Um, I would just keep it very organic. I'm not there yet. So the only thing I know is that it's not necessary to have a conventional parenting written by the books. Uh, parenting can have different meanings. Yeah. Parenting could also be very choice based. Parenting could also be very adult adult relationship based, yeah. like something at least that I've seen with my brother. And so, something that I won't do is be a typical parent by the book. Right. Yeah. Yeah, which is so interesting. I I, I love the way you said it. I mean, I think your Nana Ji was kind of a great, yeah. uh, you know, um, great foresight to raise oh, somebody back in times with with uh, so much uh, clarity right yes uh, let's let's do a fun rapid fire okay uh, let's let's see that um one regret that you have that you want to teach your kids early on if and when you have them um travel early start traveling early okay one word that never existed in your dictionary no one word you want to add to the dictionary 
or like maybe underline or emphasize or... low okay one memory you would never forget that has made you this strong one memory that i would never forget that has made me strong yeah i think the day when we went for my uh, mother's final rituals and when my granddad my nana ji said that you know uh, be very kind to the world and it doesn't matter how many years you live it just matters how you live it and this is something that's happening to you all now but it's going to happen to everybody because death is reality of life i think that that moment and those lines they never go from my mind wow incredible dude incredible yeah. thank you so much for sharing i'm sure this has been extremely tough for you as well yeah it was it was different yeah uh, and i'm sure it's very very different from all the super power discussions that you keep having but uh, i'm so glad this story will help so many people uh, kind of overcome that inbuilt uh, inbuilt conditioning trauma reality whatever you may call it uh, or whatever form it exists within them so thanks so much for sharing this isha thank you so much manzi i think we just build this aura around like people that we can be their vulnerable best so it was not at all tough it was very comfortable thank you thank you.